What is freedom of speech? It's the freedom to speak. So I read a politician today saying, I agree with freedom of speech, but there are limits. Well, there's no freedom of speech then. Mm. Freedom of speech is the freedom to speak. If anyone's not allowed to speak, then it's not freedom of speech. It's freedom to conform mm. to certain parameters of what are acceptable. What directs people's lives? What directs their opinions? What directs their behavior? Their perceptions. Their perceptions of themselves, their perceptions of the world, their perceptions of world events. Where do we get those perceptions from? We get them from information received. It might be a personal experience information, or it might be the 10 o'clock news, or it might be the Daily Mail, or something on Facebook. The point is, if you um, control the information that people receive, then you will, to a vast extent, dictate their perception. And as we see, and we're seeing it massively now, once you give that power to an authority, it then starts interpreting uh, what can and cannot uh, be uh, said in a way that squeezes and squeezes and squeezes more and more of what cannot be said. This is what political correctness is about. Mm. What is political correctness? Especially if you also censor, suppress and marginalize other people giving another fix, another version of the same event or the first situ uh, same situation. Now I've just come back um, literally a few days ago from America, I've I'm, I'm, I'm been filming there, and particularly Silicon Valley. I call it the devil's playground. If you now look at that, what is when you visit it, a very small area of America, never mind the world, it's simply manipulating the target population to silence itself. So those in authority don't have to. It's ridiculous. Now, people say, well, you, you say that people can say anything. Well, yes, I do. And I'll, say, I'll tell you why. Um, there are laws against incitement to racism, incitement to uh, hatred, incitement to, to violence. There are laws against that. Are they laws you agree with? Uh, yeah, and if people um, use their freedom of speech to incite those things, um, then there are laws to deal with that, and those laws should deal with it. What I'm saying is, once you start censoring freedom of speech at the point of delivery, or, or even more uh, sinister, before the point of delivery, by banning people from the right to have access to uh, the communication networks or speak in public. You've got companies that are Facebook, uh, Google, etc., that are increasingly, A, dominating um, the gathering of data of people's lives, B, because of the way they have so impacted upon the uh, channels of communication, mm -hmm. they dictate to a, such a, an increasing extent what people see and what people don't see. That is what the fascists do. What, what, what did fascists do in, in Nazi Germany? What does any tyranny do? It wants to um, silence those that are exposing the tyranny and have a different version of events to the tyranny. So what did the Nazis do? They burnt the books. They banned the meetings of people who were exposing the Nazis. And now in this inverted world, we have people who call themselves progressives and they seem to um, have this extraordinary self-delusion that that progressive mentality has something to do with being liberal when it's not the opposite of liberal. They are the ones that claim to be um, wanting uh, people to be inclusive and to have diversity. It's very simple. Um, I, I've um, come across many, many stories like this. In fact, to such an extent that um, Facebook has had to uh, say, actually, we're not doing it on purpose or it's just for advertising. They are actually listening to conversations. Um, obviously, you've not got a, a human being sitting there, um, although if they're targeting someone, it's a human being, but it, the general population, it's, it's algorithms. We're talking AI now. I mean, the possibilities of human um, manipulation of communication and the gathering of data now are, are limitless increasingly. But I don't want to silence any of them. Because um, 
Are we so immature that we can't hear different opinions? Even those we don't like, sits back in, in amazement, horrified, call the police and make our own um, judgments on, what are being on what's being said and the validity of it. Or, or do we not have the maturity to, to put forward another counter argument, which if we are confident in what we're saying, will um, demolish um, that which we don't agree with? Anyone that wants to silence people rather than argue their case can't have much confidence in their own case, surely. Mm. And once you go down this road of um, giving authority the right to decide um, what can be said, what opinions can be, can be had, you are, you are in a tyranny. And that's where we're going now. But it's bigger than that. The control out of Silicon Valley of the information we receive, um, the data that's collected, and increasingly the nature of the AI that, uh, that's running things, concentrates that power in such a small area, in such, such a small number of hands. Um, and if you um, want to have um, control by the few of the vast number, you have to centralize power. And that's what is happening in Silicon Valley on a scale that beggars belief. It's also the fact that humanity has been hoaxed on a monumental scale in relation to freedom of expression and freedom of information. And it's been done out of an area that I call the devil's playground. Uh, it's better known as Silicon Valley. What's happened is when you do the research, um, intelligence organizations like the CIA in the United States, uh, the National Security Agency, and um, the Pentagon through an organization called DARPA, the technological development arm of the Pentagon. Well, it, 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 anything's possible when you have algorithms that can filter out um, information that's not good for the uh, agenda you have or the outcome you want and emphasize information that does support the outcome that you want. And increasingly, it's coming to light that this is what's happening. <coughs> See, when... Um, the internet started. They began seed funding technology and companies to develop what has become now known as the internet and an, um, an outgrowth of that, what became known as social media and the search engine technology, which eventually became known as Google. Um, it was sold as the free flow of information. You could, you could uh, post all kinds of opinions. Now, if that didn't start like that, and, and right from the start is you can't say that, you can't do that, then it wouldn't have got this, uh, this massive uh, control and, uh, and, um, um, and influence on the communications that go on between people. All those were seed funded by the, this military intelligence network. And when they were selling it, because you, you can't show something's real face at the, at the start, otherwise people will reject it and it won't get anywhere. You have to put another face to the work. So it was Google, oh yeah, Google, yeah, and we just got a search engine, we can find what we like, that's great, eh? And social media, oh, you post it's censorship, friend, isn't it great? And then it builds, and then it builds, and then it builds. And now you've reached a point now with Facebook where it claims 2.2 uh, billion active users. So you start with what people want. And then, especially more recently, you, and faster and faster, you start um, doing, especially when you, you, you enter the realm of semi-monopoly, you start taking away the freedom of the free flow of information you have um, this 90% monopoly on search engines, uh, um, searches of Google. And once this monopolistic situation uh, was reached, then they started saying, okay, now we've got this much control, we are gonna start deciding what you see and what you don't see. It's fishing line out 
Oh, isn't it great? Yeah, right. say what you like. You know, no censorship. Ooh, gotcha.